The views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the hosts and guests and not necessarily those of the staff and management of WWDB-TV. We are, are live on Facebook. Hi, Facebook. If uh, you follow us on Facebook, you should have got a notification because you're big fans. And every time we go live, you get a notification, just like I did. Just like I do on all my accounts that Alexia yeah. makes me keep updated. Uh, if you're not that big of a fan, fuck off. Whatever. We don't care. We're pretty happy with the way we are, doing it the way we do. Right? Do we style. You do you, boo. We do we. <laughs> That's how we do. All right. So let's start with, do you want to start or do you want to wait till Toxic gets here? Now nah, we can, we can start. So, um, so I went camping this weekend. It was a three day weekend. I haven't had a three day weekend where I didn't have to be like available, available in a really long time. And I almost didn't have this weekend available because the one of the stores that I'm opening was supposed to grand open this weekend, and now it's closer to the end of the month. So, ooh, I got my three-day weekend. I went camping. For those of you who don't know me, I am an outdoorsy fat chick. I love camping. I like hiking. I like all of that crap. Um, and it's been a really long time since we've done more than, like, sleep overnight in a campground. So, um, I started a – can I plug the other – can I plug my new channel? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Okay. So I started a new YouTube channel. That, that's up to you. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I started a new YouTube channel. Um, it's called Wolf Wagon Adventure. Feel free to go follow. There's only two videos. Uh, say, say it again. Slow. Wolf Wagon Adventure. Uh, there's also an Instagram, same name, uh, and that's it, really. Because I'm not a social media whore or maven or really much of anything. I barely keep up my personal ones. I can guarantee you that Wolf Wagon Adventure is going to be hit or miss. It's not going to be a weekly thing. It's basically going to be a when we do something thing. But if you're a fan of camping, if, if you're, you're a fan, fan of, of camping, a, adventuring out, and uh, road, road tripping, trips. Yeah, I do a lot of that, and I'm going to start uh, chronicling it as well as – one of the things we were big DIYers, we like to make stuff ourselves. And when I bought this minivan <clears throat> that I have, I instantly knew that I was going to be doing a lot of road tripping in it. And that means road tripping for me, for me also means camping because I am a miserly motherfucker. And I do not like to spend money unless I absolutely have to, unless it's on like <laughs> shoes and purses. Um, and so I knew I wanted to make this a camping kit that I could put in and take out so I could still have a minivan. I could still transport three or four people in it and all my gear and my big dog, which is what I did this weekend. So my, what I call family in it, which is me, my son, and my son's father. My son's father and I, if you don't know or don't watch the show or apparently live under a fucking rock, we're not together, but we're very good friends now. Um, you co-parent. You co-parent co very, very well. Very, very well. Um, it's almost a brother-sister thing, although we do occasionally, you know, throw out there the uh, tongue-in-cheek reference to when we were in a relationship. It's very funny. Nobody really gets it except the two of us because it's like an inside thing, but it's hilarious. But we co-parent really well. And he is a minimalist survivalist as well as a communications nerd, like a comms nerd. Which I should add, you should probably add some of his stuff to your channel i'm going to yeah. make him at the very least write me scripts if not do a few videos on or give you uh, ideas <clears throat> on solar panels because he's a big solar guy um we did most of our power consumption through solar power this weekend uh we kept our phones charged with the van uh, at least my son and i did because it's got a special power system that allows us to charge phones without draining the battery um, but we also had my Bluetooth speakers, which I kept charged up with one of my solar panels that I have that he gave me. And uh, 
the radios that we had, because I tell you, it was a comms nerd. We had three radios, and that doesn't include the CB setup we had. You told me <clears> on, <throat> on, on, the, on the ride here to the show, she said, he was totally my Uhura. He was my Uhura. He was my Uhura. <laughs> and I told him that. We got about 15 miles into the trip, and he's fiddling with the CB, getting us uh, queued in with the truck drivers. Because if you don't have a CB radio and you're going in a long haul truck, you should you can go. You can pick one up for like 40 bucks at like Fry's. <clears throat> Tune into the trucker station because the truckers will start sending messages down the line to peop- to the truckers behind them. If there's cops, if there's an accident, if there's a reroute or a detour, you can know miles and miles ahead of time because the truckers are just passing this information back through the CB radio. So we had the CB on. We get about 15 miles into the trip and I realize... And I turned to him, I said, <clears throat> you're my Uhura. And he just started laughing because he's also a Trekkie. So he knew it. He knew what I was talking about. It was hilarious. So we went camping. The plan was we were going to go to Yankee Meadow, Utah. Uh, Yankee Meadow has two campgrounds. One is a paid site and one is what is called a designated dispersal site, which means you can camp there, but there's no facilities, no guaranteed facilities. There might be a pit toilet or there might be like rock pits you could put a fire in if fires are allowed, but there's nothing guaranteed at these sites we got started later than i wanted to i wanted to leave early and i almost left early and then i got started later because somebody who had some of our stuff that we needed for camping was like an hour and a half later than they said they would be so we got wasn't off me no the i bought the ice earlier <laughs> <clears throat> so we get up there and it is 11 30 at night which normally wouldn't be a problem for me i'm totally okay with that except it's really dark because we are in the deep woods. There's no street the lights, buddy. There's no street lights. <laughs> and we forgot my powerful mag lights, so I really couldn't see. We really couldn't see beyond what the headlights would show us, what the brights would show us, which really isn't as much as you think it is because there's no reflective surfaces. Brights, your bright lights are for reflective surfaces. They're not for showing you more stuff, just so you know. It's pitch black beyond the light, the lights, and we can't see anything including people no people at the designated dispersal site and that was really unusual because while this isn't a well-known site it is a very popular site we knew we were going to be camped in with other people but there are no people we're crossing piles of logs not like logs i'm like whole trees you're like cut down you like entered the movie the hills have eyes or something no (laughs) Now, then we start seeing signs that says, beware heavy logging traffic. It's 11.30 at night, so we it's not going to be any traffic. We need that creepy music in the background, <laughs> Johnny, okay? Practically. We had to turn the radio off because we were a little freaked out. <laughs> and <clears throat> so all you can see is, like, the road and a darkness that has clearly got something in it. And then piles, massive piles of trees, downed logged trees. And I'm like... Why would they be logging in a national forest? Like, this is Dixie National Forest. They really only do logging there when they need to control tree population or something. It's not, and it's never like this. This is on a grand logging scale. I'm, I'm just thinking <clears throat> zombie beavers and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. So I get a little freaked out. We get to the very end, and my GPS is still working. I have a GPS navigational system, and it's still working because I can still see satellites. Um, no phone service, but we get to a gate that's closed, but it's not locked. Just <laughs> it's lo- closed, but not locked means enter at your own risk, but you, you're not, not allowed to enter. Like, it's not like if they didn't want you there, they'd lock it, right? And I know that th- what we're about to cross into is the paid campsite, because what I thought was if we get there and there's still a paid campsite available because they have fire pits, uh, we'll stay at a paid campsite. We'll be hemmed in by a bunch of other people, but, you know, it'll be fine. We'll be fine. We get through, and we break, like, a tree line, and it looks like a tornado ripped through this site. There is uprooted trees. There's heavy equipment everywhere. And we can see the informational sign off to, you have to drive around a loop to get back to the informational sign because we went right instead of left. We come back, and I get out, and I go up to the informational kiosk thing and the signs are twisted and melted and it looks like a horror scene. I have like 15 movies running through my head right now. The day after just popped into my head. There is one tiny little sign that is clearly brand new that says that this site has been closed since July 15th of this year due to a forest fire. And we're like, 
what? And then it shows a tiny little map that shows all these other areas that are close, and it's all this one side of this mountain range, just completely close. And I'm like, this was not on the website. I did thorough research, but I did not she call did. the stations. I did not call the ranger station, which is what I should have done. So we turn around and we drive back down to where we know there is cell phone service. This little town called Parowan, Utah, which is like a, it's like the last stop before you turn into all the mountain roads that lead you to like Brian Head and all those other ski resorts. So we get down there and it is now midnight because it's a 30 minute drive back to where there is cell service. It is now midnight. And I spend 20 to 30 minutes on my phone going through all these other sites that are nearby and <clears throat> talking the boy and the dog are sound the fuck asleep in the van. They're just passed out because it's midnight. My kid doesn't even voluntarily stay up past 1030. He's never tried to catch Santa Claus, right? This kid does not stay up late. So he is passed the fuck out. The dog is snoring in the back seat. So uh, <clears throat> the baby daddy and I are, you know, trying to figure out where to go. The next closest spot is a place called Mammoth Creek, and I know nothing about it. I know a little bit about Yankee Meadows we, because that's what we'd been researching all week. That's where we were going. We'd watched a ton of videos. We knew people who had gone. Like, we looked at all of the reviews. We checked out other survivalists and other campers and other dispersal campers and, you know, uh, van life people who had been there. Like, I, I researched it. The fu we don't know nothing about Mammoth Creek. Nothing. Except that the GPS says it's only 43 minutes away. I'm like, okay. So we follow the GPS directions and we turn off of a dirt road, which is fine, onto an off-road dirt road, which means it's going to be a little bit rougher. And for the first hundred feet, I'm fine because I've taken this van off-road before, not like wilderness off-roading, but in dirt roads that get you to campsites. And then we come to this edge and it just drops and it turns into this 13, 14 percent embankment, just like the kind of shit the truck drivers are scared to drive down, but it's pitted, rutted dirt. And all you have are <clears throat> your headlights. All I have are my headlights. Mm -hmm. And on this side, it's mountain, and on this side, it's blackness. And I have driven roads like this before in the daytime, and I know what that means. This is a mountain cliff, this is dead air. Literally, if we go too far to one side, we're going to fall off the side of this mountain. And because it is <clears throat> an unmaintained off-road, um, there's nothing to save us. There are no posts, no guardrails, nothing. If we fall, we fall. And this is a road that I would have been a little sketchy when I had my four-wheel drive Jeep. But we are on it now, and it is so steep that I know I will never be able to back up. <laughs> I need to get to the bottom and turn around <laughs> if I want to get back out. I look to baby daddy and I say, we get about halfway down this mountain and I'm like when we get to the bottom of this road because there must be a bottom this was really long road the first flat spot I find we're just going to sleep there <laughs> if it's only big enough for the van you're gonna have to suck it up buddy we're all sleeping in the same area <laughs> and he's like that's fine that's whatever that's fine it's going on like two o'clock in the morning now it right? is now close to it is it is close to 1 30 in the morning at this point because I am going way slower because it's pitch black outside and all I have are my headlights. I don't have a light rail. I don't even have my super powerful magnite. Nothing. We get to the bottom and there's an informational kiosk for a designated camp area. We made it to the Mammoth Creek designated dispersal nice. camping area. I was like, oh, thank God. And there's a ton of people there. People with giant trailers. This they came road, down that little tiny ass road. No. I know in the, my heart of hearts, having camped in every way imaginable, RVs, giant trailers, rough camping, backpack camping. I've never done hammock camping, but I'm sure it's the same as backpack camping. I've done all of it. I know there's no way these guys made it with these 50-foot trailers down this mountain. There's another way up and down this fucking mountain. And you just happened <clears throat> upon the hard way. <laughs> Google took me the fastest way not the fastest way google took me the shortest way and we love google i love google and honestly if i had four-wheel drive i would just take that road again because it does knock a good hour off of what is the safest way down i mean and it takes like 40 miles in an hour off of this trip 
it's a really great way, but this road was designed for four-wheel drive vehicles. Google, you need to install a system that allows you to connect to the U.S. Forestry Service, and when their little map shows <coughs> four-wheel drive recommended, you need to add that to your fucking map. Too. I'm thinking of some dude named Todd sitting at the Google... Tad from the Valley. <laughs> Tad from the Valley, <laughs> sitting at his Google computer, checking on your request for GPS, and he's going... She needs a story to tell later. It must Let's be. give her this way. He's like, fuck it. Let's do this. I happen to know all, because it's Google and I know all, I know your personal off-road and backpacking history, so <laughs> you can handle it in your rear-wheel drive minivan. And I made it to the bottom of the mountain. And we found one spot <clears throat> left in the designated camping area, and it was perfect because there's nothing to one side. Of, there was only one other area that could have been camped into one side of us. So... We didn't have any like immediate neighbors the first day and a half we were there. Some people moved in in the middle of the night on Sunday morning, but everybody there was pretty cool. Beautiful site, just gorgeous. And we had, and perfect, like we had a little fire pit. The fire ranger came up about halfway through the day and changed the fire restriction for no fires to controlled fires in a pit only. And so we were able to build a fire. That, is, have, <clears throat> that is one of the downfalls of camping out here in the West. In is, the summer. In the summer is that most forests, including ours up at Mount Charleston, there are no fires allowed. No yeah. fires at all. <clears throat> so across the way from us was this couple that had the kind of camping trailer that I want to get and a canoe. They literally had almost the exact same rig I want to have for myself, right down to the fucking canoe. And so Sunday afternoon evening when they got back from clearly they they left after breakfast and they came back after dinner they have been off canoeing somewhere all goddamn day and they looked to be about my age so i wandered over there because campers were all very friendly we don't go into people's camps just to whatever you're not supposed to you're not supposed to but we will like if we need to ask questions like we'll come up to each other like we found out where this camp across from us was going to go get water because we thought we were going to run a little short on camp on cleaning water but turns out we actually had like more than enough and so i walked up to this couple and i asked them where do you guys go canoeing around here i'm not familiar with this side of the mountain it was like our plan was to go to yankee meadow and the guy was he was a local he's like oh my god he's like i was like it looked like it was burned to the ground he goes that whole side of the mountain is burned to the ground there's oh, no so camping and you know why because some motherfucker started a campfire that wasn't supposed to right most likely and like wasn't paying attention to it or wasn't being smart about it because one tiny you know those little embers you can't see that is what starts a lot of forest fires really it is follow follow <clears throat> the rules the forestry sets people learn, if you go camping and learn how to maintain a campfire you can maintain a campfire that doesn't throw off a bunch of those sparks and ashes um you don't have to have a huge raging bonfire to have a campfire it really doesn't take much I am going to post some pictures later on my um, Instagram. Wolf Wagon Adventure. Wolf Wagon Adventure. The last meal I made, and my last meal of a trip is usually the biggest meal I make, it was um, <clears throat> chicken breasts, uh, Italian seasoned chicken breasts, cooked in a foil pocket in the ashes of the fire. Not in the fire itself, but in the coals and ashes of the fire and corn on the cob and i would just like to let you know that that is the juiciest fucking chicken i have ever made and that corn on the cob was so goddamn good that the dog wanted to eat it like it was <laughs> amazing of course my dog's fat and will eat almost anything um but so we found out that the road that we were on flattens out exactly where the campsite is and turns into this beautiful not paved dirt but like valley lane it's just <laughs> fucking beautiful after it's like death and defiance heroism you must be insane to go down oh look at the beautiful trees like this <laughs> it's the most insane road ever and it leads you through a tiny little village and out to um the a state road that's like, completely now i've paved. got the sound of music in my head <laughs> yeah no it's like it's like it's the like dun 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 dun. <laughs> the hills are alive. Like that's exactly how it is. It's like you're going to die the whole way down until you get to this point, and then it's all butt cheeks and roses from this point forward. It's beautiful. It was insane, but it was gorgeous. We took a hike down that road to see how far, like how nice it was to the end of this road, because there are people on OHVs and ATVs all day up and down, like, going up 
the fucking road that it's designed for, like that death road up there. But they'd also go the other way. And I'm like, there's got to be something else down that other way. There's no way, because these guys have the what's called toy haulers, and they're hauling OHVs in them. If you don't know what an OHV is, it's an off-highway vehicle. It's that four-seater quad, that four-seater ATV. You know, the people they have like eight-point harnesses. People wear helmets, and they drive around on them. Yeah, that. They had like one of those and like two or three ATVs in their toy haul. These are for people who don't like to hike. That'd be perfect for me. Yeah. I... There had to have been close to $4 million worth of recreational vehicles in that campsite. <laughs> I'm just saying, between the trailers and the vehicles themselves, and so many big-ass trucks. But then that family that moved in Sunday afternoon all showed up in fucking sports cars and then popped out giant tents on a whole campsite out of four sports cars. Like, there was a convertible Mustang. I was like, clearly, they did not come down the road we came down. <laughs> Somehow, there is another road to this campsite. And we found it. It is, it is a, a much longer trip. It's it adds like forty miles to the trip, but it is way easier. Like I could have, if I wouldn't have even if I'd known about the other direction, I would have come. I would have added another hour to my trip that night. We would have gone to bed at three o'clock in the morning just to save the butt clenching. Because I'm telling you, my sphincter was so tight I didn't poop till Sunday. <laughs> I just. That, much like your dog. Much like my dog, who <laughs> is a city dog. Absolutely city dog. After the first, like, hour, he was like, are we going home now? Because we've been at this dog park a long time. <laughs> he, uh, he has only known how to go to the bathroom through a doggy door. He does not. We don't walk him to go to the bathroom because we have a backyard. He has a doggy door. There's no need to walk him to go to the bathroom. We don't live in a fucking apartment. We have a house with a yard. So he doesn't know how to poop on a leash. <laughs> he doesn't know you're allowed to poop on a leash. You're not allowed to poop in the house. You're not allowed to poop in the car. So he just assumes you just poop outside in the backyard. Like when we're at the dog park, he doesn't poop at the dog park. He barely pees at the dog park. He doesn't even mark things. He won't even lift his leg. Like he'll sniff. You'll see that spot at like 8,000 dogs have peed. And you know every dog they sniff it and then they pee on it. My dog sniffs at it, wrinkles his nose and walks away. He's too good to pee. <laughs> Another peapot. <laughs> he was so upset with me this whole time. And then Sunday when we took that long ass hike, but he came back, laid down on his bed and slept until dinner time and then realized we weren't sitting next to him and like walked like he was 80 over to us and just <laughs> stared at me angrily. Like he's like, you did this to me. I should be at home on my memory foam mattress, which is out here in the dirt. <laughs> it's in the dirt. <laughs> I am dirty. <laughs> I just want to go home. Every time we'd open a van door, he'd be right there. Are we going home now? Can I get in now? Now is now a good time. He was so not okay with camping. Do you have? Are you gonna put? Put? Do you have pictures of him out camping with you? Um, because most of his time was spent on the dog bed. Almost every picture I'm going to post is of him on his dog bed. Okay. <laughs> Because at every opportunity, because he tried to lay down on the rocks, and it's hilarious. He would sit in them, and he'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> like he'd get a weird look on his face and be adjusting his ass around because there's rocks in his butt. He's not used to this, <laughs> and so he's like, okay, maybe if I spread my weight out, and it's a considerable amount of weight, he is fat. And so he laid down, and then he would flop to the other side, and then he would sit up and just, <sighs> <laughs> yeah, and then he'd go lay down on his bed and just. Total city dog. What is it you Total called him? Dog. He was uh, without the fluff. Oh, he is an enormous Bichon Frise without the fluff. <laughs> he is just a home dog. He loves to go to the dog park, and he likes to go for little walksies around the neighborhood. Um, but by Sunday, he would finally figured out, like, he finally designated a place for him to poop. And then I had to train my companions not to yell at him when he was wandering off. I'm like, he's going to poop. Stop yelling at him. Like, because we didn't want him to wander out of camp because I, he's a really good dog and I don't, he's off leash trained. He uh, follows commands off leash really well. I don't need him on a leash. I put him on a leash when the ranger's around because that's required, but other than that, fuck it. So when he would start to finally wander off into the area that he'd finally decided he would pee and poop and I had to train the other two to not yell at him. I'm like, just let him go poop. He's trying to poop. That would be like me following you to the little pit toilet over there, yelling at you at the whole way. Where are you going? What are you doing? Where are you going? What are you doing? <laughs> Leave him alone. Let him poop. <laughs> so he finally would poop. He didn't hardly eat at all because he's one of those dogs when he gets stressed, he doesn't eat. 
Um, he ate a little bit. After the long ass hike Sunday morning, we cooked burgers for lunch and I cooked a plain one for him. And I'd mixed bacon grease into his food to try to get him to eat it that morning, but he wouldn't even eat that. And I was like, oh, that's really sad. Like he's really stressed out. So I made him a burger for lunch and we cut it up and we put it in his food and he demolished that whole bowl of food after that hike. Cause he was hungry <laughs> and fat and angry. <laughs> And he's just like, he was angry eating. He was like, you could hear him. And then he laid down. He drank like a gallon of water, laid down, and passed out. And he didn't poop until like four hours later. (laughs) He was just so angry with us after that walk. I love your puppy. I love your dog. He's such a sweet dog. And I can so see all of that happening. (laughs) Yeah, he's got so much personality. I'll give him some extra love next time I see him. He's really good. (laughs) When we got home, we got all the gear out. We all... We had to wash ourselves. We, um, there was a pit toilet, but there are no running water, no facilities. So we were able to keep our hands clean, but really that's it. Butts and hands, that's all that was clean. Nobody got dysentery, nobody got sickness. We were fine, but we were filthy and reeked of cigarette, uh, not cigarette, but sm- camp smoke because we'd had a fire basically going for like two days. And sitting around it. My son's, you know, throwing every branch he can find into this fucking fire. So it's everything from dead wood to wet wood to fucking pine needles. We smelled like smoke. Getting my 150-pound fat, lazy dog into my tiny little bathtub. (laughs) He does not like getting wet. He does not like being in the water. He does not like getting wet. But I finally actually convinced him to, he wouldn't let me put him in there. But I got in and started washing my feet off. And so he was like, oh, this is what's happening. And so he was finally like slowly crawled in. And then when I started giving him a bath, um, you're supposed to bathe your pets in the same bath water you would bathe yourself in. The same temperature, not too hot, not too cold, just right warm temperature. I started getting him wet before, and I started sudsing him up. Before I even got all the way down his back, he's, like, falling asleep in the bath. <laughs> like, I had one of my scalp scrubbers out, and I was, like, doing his back, and he's just, like, <laughs> my son is laughing. <laughs> yeah, he was just such a city dog. Like, and we, finally, and he's all clean, and he shakes himself off, and he stood in my bathroom and went, I swear to God, he went, huh. <laughs> he was just... The, so happy to be in like now when i'm like you're so clean he's like i am there's no <laughs> dirt on me <laughs> the capper of this story uh she's telling me on the way in is uh you're giving him some love when you got home today from work yeah. go ahead so i was giving him some love um baby daddy's sitting in his usual spot and when the dog is giving you love his head is usually like right here because he's like nuzzled up to you so you can't see the rest of him because his head is huge and uh, so I'm scratching his ears and I'm talking to such a good boy, such a good boy. I'm so much fun and you're so clean and you smell nice. Your breath still stinky though. Do you want to go camping again? And I hear baby daddy just start cracking up laughing. And I'm like, what? He's like, the whole time you're talking to him, his ass is just waggling. Like, cause he's a, his whole body waggles. He said, as soon as you said camping, his body stopped moving. <laughs> like, he was like, no, no camping, no. <laughs> Joke's on him. We're going again in about four weeks. <laughs> But yeah, I when I got home, Toxie stayed home with my angry old dog, who I would not take camping with me because he'd be barking constantly, and he's an asshole. So Toxie and her daughter stayed at my house to keep my wiener dog company, which apparently he didn't give a fuck that they were even there. <laughs> <laughs> he was so he was he was like uh, he buries himself under the one couch mm-hmm. in, so the, in, all, like, in all the pillows and stuff yeah, like. Yeah, so like where the hell is? And we changed his name at Swiper because we couldn't. We called him every yes name in the book, and, like, Swiper stuck, so... He responded to Swiper, by the way. When we said Swiper, he was like, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think his you know. name has changed so now. So it's, it's Swiper now. Yeah. But uh, we couldn't find him anywhere. We're like, oh, my God, did we, like, lose the dog? <laughs> and we're looking, and my daughter's all paranoid, and, yeah, so sure enough, he was... Buried under you know, any he pillows. he was buried. But he was so super chill. Like, he would just come over, and he's like, I'd like you to pet me now. <laughs> That's so I enough. pet him, and then, like, 30 seconds later, he's like, I think I'm done. He's like half cat. Gonna, yeah, and, like, I'm going to get that done on the ground now. And I'm like, okay. And at one point, he climbed up <laughs> in her bed. <laughs> and that's the picture I sent you. But he climbed up in her bed, and, and he just laid there for a few minutes. And then he's like, I'm done. <laughs> so down and ran away? Down and left. So 
Yeah, he is, but he's exactly like a cat. Yeah, he is basically so, like a cat. Yeah. And uh, so I got home and I told Toxie, Toxie is well known for not pooping in public places. I told her that <laughs> my dog is like her kid because he just would not poop. Like he, he, it was a real struggle to get him to poop outside. I was like, it, I basically have Toxie as a dog. <laughs> it doesn't want to be. What it is like, actually, he's large. He's a little clumsy. He knocks things over. Not on purpose. He just gets super excited and then knocks things over. Loves it when he's clean. Yeah. Has licks, no desire to go camping. No. And licks people, <laughs> and, licks people and places inappropriately. So yes. <laughs> that's right. I kind of like your dog. Basically, I have Toxie sure. as a dog. Sure. I called him a, a giant Bichon Frise without the fluff because that's basically what he is. He's just a giant house dog. If he could be a lap dog, I knew he was going to be big when he was a puppy because I knew what his breed mix was. So he's like not allowed on the f- living room furniture except for the one ottoman. He can get up on that, but he's uncomfortable with it because he's not allowed on the living room furniture. So he'll get up there and then he'll get off again. But he's allowed up in my bed. She sent me the picture of the wiener dog in the bed with her. And last night, Big Dog decided that he wasn't sleeping anywhere but in my bed because I have a really nice mattress. It's very comfortable. <laughs> like, really nice. Like, yeah. I wasn't going to leave. I, wasn't. I was and, just uh, going to be like, hey, when you got back, I was going to be like, I forwarded my mail here. Yeah. And <laughs> so know. he jumped up on the bed. So she sent me a picture of when the wiener dog slept with her, and I sent her, well, I'll, I'll see you one small dog and raise you a big dog. And there's my big dog. He takes up half the bed. Like, nobody else can sleep with me when the dog sleeps in the bed. So if you want to see some of the pictures from Sierra's uh, camping trip and pictures of her fabulous dog. It's Wolfwagon Adventure. There's no S on the end. Okay. Wolfwagon uh, Adventure. Can you, uh, is that a hashtag? Are you going to make that? Can you make that a hashtag? I've already hashtagged some stuff with it. Okay. So. Uh, Johnny Fever, could, could you, uh, on the fancy video, put a hashtag Wolfwagon Adventure at the bottom of our video for this first half? You can find it on Thank Facebook you. and Instagram, and that's it. And YouTube. I've, and YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. You have a Facebook for it, too? Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. I have a, yeah. Okay. Even my daughter today was like, oh, my gosh, she wasn't kidding. Like, they really camp camped. <laughs> and then she showed me. I'm surprised yeah. your daughter is not a fan of the camp thing. Well, I mean, she's never really had the option. Oh. <laughs> She told me they went camping one time, and I was very yeah. excited. And then I found out they'd rented a, a KOA cabin. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. like, they give you sheets. Like, Those are nice. They <laughs> are nice. My first thing was, like, where's, can I get the Wi-Fi password? Like, as soon as I got there. <laughs> and so um, and that was roughing it, because I've stayed at the KOA a few times. But the best time I went camping was up in Zion. It was gorgeous. And there's a place called, like, Zion resorts or something where the the cabin had satellite tv and a big huge bubble tub and like showers with multiple heads in different places um and like a full kitchen inside and it was great but you know like so just so you know (laughs) the fanciest camping i've ever done is at a koa i stayed wait my sister and i stayed in a camp cabin on the way out here it was one night so it wasn't really camping but Alexi and I went and saw the eclipse last year, and we stayed at a KOA in a tent site that had power. I fell in love with KOAs because of it. That is the fanciest tent site I have ever stayed in. All of my other tent sites, we're lucky if there's a rock-built fire pit. Be- oh, wait, no. We rough it. We do the not. One, we hardly ever stay in places. The one we go to has, like, a mini golf. Yeah. They have a pool, a jacuzzi. They have I the need, I need power for the coffee maker. Totally. And for her, so my best friend doesn't die machine. Yes. <laughs> I sleep with an apnea machine. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. I had w- the packing list. I got it, I could breathe into you all night. <laughs> you like, your turn. We should sell tickets for that. Yeah. <laughs> it be all night. We could put up a Craigslist ad, and oh, surely sorry. there'd be somebody willing to come do it for us. <laughs> So that was my... If you like tax and you're not blowing air into my mouth right now, I don't know what's happening. (laughs) Yeah, so that was my camping weekend. It was a lot of fun. Uh, We didn't bring the right games. I'm also a survivalist. I'm a prepper. And I have in every go bag I own a deck of cards. With the exception of apparently my camping kit. (laughs) I had Jenga. I had Boggle. I had Yahtzee. I had Cthulhu Dice. I had Cthulhu dice, and we had some road trip uh, bingo cards. Not a single fucking deck of cards, like regular playing cards. I'm like, we could be playing poker or 21 or go fish. 
Because we got bored with all the rest of it, because Jenga camping is apparently not a lot of fun. <laughs> so we went, um, we were bored the one night. My, my daughter has this thing because she's busy, t- like, all the time. Oh, and you saw so our when, board games? Yeah, so when she has full downtime, it's rare. And so usually when she's, like, full downtime, she's like, do-do-do, do-do-do. 15 minutes later, I'm bored. What can we do? And I said, all right, go find board games. And I said, they're probably in the kitchen. I said, you know, look on the hutch or whatever. And she found them. And we looked. And then I said, oh, bring exploding cans. We'll do that. There's and two I versions. Well, I couldn't figure it out. Oh. <laughs> I, I can teach that. you guys. It's really easy. <laughs> so I'm reading the But you must have gotten the NS. The, did you find the not safe for work edition or the game or the party edition? Whatever one is, it has like a box where it flips up. And it plays the taco song? No. It, well, it didn't play one for me. Oh, then you got the not safe for work edition. That's the oh, one you well, opened that up. That would have been fabulous to play with my teenagers. Yes, because there's like the pecker of eternity and stuff like that. Thank God. <laughs> I couldn't figure it out then. I mean, I went through there's like Taco Cat and, and stuff like that in there. But I, I read the directions and I just, I mean, I gave up like three seconds later. And I'm I'll like, show Let's you guys. Watch Brooklyn so what did you, what did you end up playing? We watched, we just watched Brooklyn Nine. Oh, they just they loaded my cues. Oh yeah. With, oh yeah. I went to I went to go watch something on Prime and I was like Jack Ryan. Oh, why yeah, is that I continue that watching? Too. Oh, it must so, have been toxic. So we we go and you know we're gonna watch TV and first we pull up our Netflix queue, right? <laughs> it's all and anime and sci-fi. What the fuck are the real shows? I don't it's know what this is. Is it Netflix? Star Trek, Star Trek, anime, anime, anime sci-fi, sci-fi, and Star you Trek, scroll anime. Down and like you think the real stuff would be underneath all of that, and like you get down and then you find the good stuff. No, and then like hit search buttons and shit. And I felt bad at first. I'm like, oh my god, we're totally gonna mess up our queue. And then afterward, I'm like, no, she deserves like deserves some real shit. Parks so, and Rec was in there yeah, somewhere. Parks and Rec was in there. I'll give you that. Like we love that show, but I mean, The Office is our daily. Uh, you know, we even put that on if we just need background noise. And, um, Where's the regular TV? I saw, no, I could for real. And then Ozark season two is out, so I wanted to start that. And I, you know, I kept trying. But, um, and then we went on Hulu, and then. <laughs> Hulu thing. is all Rick and Morty. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm like, are we on da- Stargate. Are we on, are we on Sons? <laughs> no. <laughs> like this. I specifically clicked your- Sailor Moon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get any better this either, is, did it? This, no. is, <laughs> this is the weekend Toxie discovered how big of a nerd you yeah, are. She did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. I was like, she's oh, like, no. let's play Monopoly. It's fucking Star Trek it Monopoly. Is. It is. It is. <laughs> There's also, I also have Risk, but it's yeah, Star yeah. Wars Risk. And I, I won't play Risk. Like, Risk is too long. Yeah. I have to play games that are like, you know, let's get through this. And I can play Monopoly. Maybe while doing something else or taking a break because I have such a short attention span, but I couldn't play it as Star Trek or Hogwarts or whatever the <laughs> fuck it was. There's Hogwarts and game I'm in like, too. I'm like, no, I'm not. No, <laughs> I refuse. Could have pulled down the D and D books and started rolling yeah, up no, some characters for yourselves. No, 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 no. So we, we fixed your cue for you. <laughs> going to grow up and when he's talking to his therapist when he's done saying everything about you he's going to be like listen and she has this friend <laughs> that doesn't know how to shut her mouth <laughs> because they came in and I'm like I slept in your bed naked <laughs> at least I didn't ask you if you busted out the dildos while you were up Which there I found. <laughs> did you find the dildos I'm looking for the remote so I rolled over on oh you found my room. dildo oh yeah no I yeah. didn't look for mine I it wasn't a scenario in which I could. But I no, no, because whenever you go to your friends and stay the night, you always use their dildo. I, no, I asked <laughs> mine, mine are housed at her house mm-hmm. because she's Sierra's home for Wayward Souls and Vibrator Storage. <laughs> so, I am also um, have Van Will Travel moving in uh, delivery service. Yes, yes, exactly. Multi, multi-service. 
Um, so I had already asked her beforehand. I pre-asked, do you mind if I masturbate in your bed? <laughs> She's like, no, go ahead. And I'm like, Lay down a sheet if you're going to get juicy. Yeah, that's it. She's like, you know, put a towel down if you have to. But I ended up not being the only one staying in that room. Like, because there was her, an air mattress. Because her daughter is apparently a scaredy cat. Yeah, apparently. So she didn't want to sleep all the way downstairs by herself. So she put the air mattress on the ground. I'm like, I'm not sharing this bed. Like, I am starfishing naked. You are not even coming near this side of the room. Like, <laughs> you just don't talk to me. Do not pass the point where the TV is. Like, pretend we're not here. So I rolled over looking for the remote, and I roll, and I go, and I'm like, there's our big old dildo. <laughs> it's not a big old dildo. It's like six inches. Looks no. like an average Johnson Peter. No. <laughs> it's not huge. No. <laughs> Does have a suction cup, though, which works great. It did have a suction cup. <laughs> I didn't touch it, though. I'm like, that, that crosses the line, like, of our friendship. Like, I knew I could, like, be naked in your bed. You wouldn't care. You know, any of that, like, I knew you'd be okay. But I'm like, I can't, I don't even want to, pu- I want it to push it under the bed more, just in case. I'm like, I can't do it. I can't do it. So this might be the day that my child finds out what a dildo is. Like, it might be the day. <laughs> um, considering the enormous bag of dildos you handed me, <laughs> I'm certain she knows what a dildo is. <laughs> she probably <laughs> he's probably too like, traumatized to ask. It's like a beach bag full of dildos. <laughs> and one extra she found just laying around in her office. No. <laughs> I couldn't find that for the longest time. I lost my dildo in my office. <laughs> Wait, you so just like, ah! <laughs> And it was gone like a like a like a like a champagne cork lost into the ether? But I found it. <laughs> <laughs> I you've never seen Toxie move that fast. There are four children under the age of fourteen in the t- office with us. I have a bag of dildos on my arm, and she snatches that up and sneaks it to me. We were like some, like 007 sneaking these dildos it was around. Like Shit. Was passing you drugs. Yeah, like, it really was. How, and the funny thing is, is that ninja dildo we, passing. Yeah, yes. ninja dildo passing. And the funny thing is. That was the one I talked about on the show before that my sister bought me for Christmas and I could never bring myself to use because Your my sister, sister bought, bought it you for one. me for Christmas. So that one's unused? That is. It's in the, pa- it's in the package. So She might bring home one less dildo. And I, I, I probably won't notice. Because she, will, she like, will never use it. She knows I'll, it came from her sister. I'll be like, is my wand in there? I think <laughs> Fernie did try to call dibs, about. though. She did try to call dibs, yeah. On my vagina? No, on your dildo. On that dildo. On Christmas, uh, dildo. Your Christmas dildo. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I was, I was totally like, when I rolled, I'm like, there it is. <laughs> and I just, I wanted to push it under, but I couldn't. I'm like, that crosses the line of friendship right there. But you did so, find the remotes. I totally found the remotes, and it was the best time ever. So I posted a picture in our super secret, and you're hilarious, by the way, but in our super <laughs> secret Facebook group, I was laying in her bed, naked, I had just gotten out of the shower, the best feeling ever. I am so sorry. Like, you totally have my butt on there. Um, I would just like to let you know you have every inch of me on there. I did not wash those sheets before you came over. <laughs> I was quite all right with that. Like, that in no way. And aren't those the most comfortable sheets no, ever? That, well, I have that same color. Uh, yeah. It's and so amazing. now I'm like, oh, no. And the same color, too. Uh-huh. And I'm like, um, so it felt, like, just super comfortable. And her bed's comfy to begin with. But the, you must have the same material in the duvet cover. Mm-hmm. Like this. It, I'll send you the link. This is happening. So, and those sheets are, you know, amazing. One of my favorites. Yeah. yeah. Um, Just so you know, Mama don't do nothing uh, awful or cheap when it comes to my fucking bed. I spend a lot of time in that bed. It is nice bed. The pillows I took camping with me are the pillows I usually sleep with on my bed. You got my decorative how, pillows. How you can use sheets less than 400 thread count, I do not understand. No, these are like, uh, yeah, like eight or 900 thread yeah. count. These yeah. sheets They're are amazing. super amazing. They're amazing. Um, but I posted this picture in our super secret Facebook group, and it was me. I was naked in her bed, um, but I had the, the cover up, and I said, guess where I am? And this funny one over here says, what are you, camping in a tent? Or, or in a sleeping bag. Camping in a sleeping bag. bag. <laughs> no! 
<laughs> no fucking chance in hell. Not unless that shit was made out of Egyptian cotton. Right. Were there dudes like fanning inside the tent? No. There can be though. That's easily arranged. So you guys had a good weekend. We you, did. You camping over at the Sierras and you camping out in the wild where the hills have eyes. <laughs> no, the hills had nothing. The hills were burnt to the fucking ground. That's what happened. It was insane. It was the you craziest. Know, your kid was super excited because um, he peed himself. <laughs> he was. Like, he, yeah, he was like, I peed everywhere. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'll show the dog how to pee outside. <laughs> The pit that, toilet. Something, and, and your son's like, I didn't have to use it. <laughs> he was so excited and proud. Yeah, he's like, I, I peed, peed everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> yeah, and I finally made the guys have, like, warn me if you're going to go pee, because if I start looking for you and you're not well hidden, I'm going to see you peeing. Because <laughs> like, they would wander off and they would think they were behind one tree, but they're not behind any tree, and it was kind of up a hill so you can see everything. <laughs> I can see you pee. I see you pee. I got. <laughs> it was a good time had by all except the dog. It was this uh, not weekend happening. coming up is uh, party party party. Uh, Crave Las Vegas is going to be uh, having their grand opening party next month. Next month. Oh, next month. Sorry, October sixth. Yes, which is awesome. Thank God because I'm already busy this weekend. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> If you ever looked at Alexi and I's calendars between the end of August and the beginning of next year, you would be fucking dumbfounded. We have three events every weekend from now until then. Yeah. We are fucking booked. I always go when I say, what are you doing? Like on Saturday or what are you doing this weekend? And they're always both like, we have to check our calendar. You might come this weekend, though, to what I we're might. doing. Yes, I might come to yeah. the Yeah. So that's going to be exciting to see you outside of Sin City Bounty territory. I would just like to let you know that somebody asked me, I have a regular standing date with a couple on Friday nights. Um, I, I love them to death and we do some things together, which is cool. Not like some things yet. And, um, <laughs> I love and they, they were man. like, like I had, I've had to like cancel on the last two Fridays because I was camping this Friday and I had something else going on the Friday before. And they're like, uh, what about this Friday to finish up our thing? And so I open up my, my calendar and I look at it and I see that it's circled which means I have something planned. So I flip up on my calendar and it says board games, 7 p.m. And I was like, well, I have board games, 7 p.m. Is that you guys? And they were like, no. And I was like, they're like, but you know, if you're busy, it's fine. I'm like, well, let me see what event this is. So I go on Facebook. I look everywhere. I have no idea where board games, 7 p.m. came from. No fucking clue. Uh, we all had a plan for board games. No, you didn't. Night because the only board game she and I play, other people refuse to play with us. Yes. <laughs> What's the one you uh, you guys play? Scrabble. For money. Scrabble. For pennies. That's for it. Yeah. money. I was no, no, no. so out. I watched you guys for a few minutes at one of your parties. <laughs> and then I'm like, I'm out. Like, I can only we, pick a cow out of the We can't even play. Piles. We've tried playing words with friends together. And, like, every two years, we'll get back on it and start playing again. But then we remember why we don't play together. Because we'll lock a board up halfway through the tile set. We can play, like, only one or two words. There's no... Because we, we play aggressively to keep the other yeah. person from playing. And it locks the board up. And so people don't like to play with us. Because if you, if you allow an opening, if I allow her an opening, she's putting down a 74-point word. Fuck and that. If, I'm going to put down a 150-point word and if I can. And if she allows an opening, I'm putting down the 74-point word. I played one of you guys for, like, two minutes. <laughs> Words After with yeah, what, which one do you remember? Probably me, I think. Maybe it was. Although I, I want to think maybe I tried you once. You can you can try to play me, but I, not, I have no, no mercy when it comes to I, even that's friends. That's okay. Like I'm, I was at the we point have no where mercy like with each dog. other. No. Yeah, we don't have mercy with each other. I have a I have a really good <laughs> friend that I'm playing right now, and I feel really bad because I'm totally kicking his ass, but I don't feel that bad. <laughs> so, you bitches ought to know better. We play tournament level Scrabble for money. We say a penny a point, but bitches, we never walked away with less than $3. Yep. I had this guy I went to school with, and he was a total dick to me in school. And somehow at one point, we ended up playing Word with Friends together. And it was, I mean, I, we were pretty on par with each other, to be quite honest, but it felt so good every time I kicked his ass. Like, <laughs> I wasn't really still harboring any, you know, ill will or anything. But at least I'm like, when I won, I'm like, 
take that, dude. There's That's one person that I don't want to play. I don't want to play, and uh, she hasn't asked me for a game, which is awesome. And that's your mom because I think she cheats. I'm sure she cheats. <laughs> yeah, and I can tell oh, when oh, when oh. I get like a new player when somebody challenges me and I see that they put down a word like somebody played the word thewy, T H E W Y. I'm like, who the fuck knows that word? You motherfucking so, cheater. <laughs> let me tell you how I play. I, years ago, I used to look at the, when you have so many letters, you can look at the sides. But I don't do that anymore. What I do instead is I just try different letters. Like, I try to take what letter I have that's the most and put it on the open tile that, that's worth the most. And then I go back and forth with all of my other. It takes me a while to respond for that reason. <laughs> Well, if there are any games that you like to play or want to play with us, uh, join us on Facebook, uh, friend us, and you can play maybe play Words with Friends. I don't play under my Alexia name, though, so if you really want to play me, send me a message. Um, if you really want to play, uh, join our Patreon account and get into the Super Secret Facebook page, yeah. and then you can learn who our real personas are, and then you can play games with us. That's right. Speaking of which, if you're watching the Super Fancy YouTube video, thank you very much. The green screen is provided by our wonderful producer, John, here at WWDB-TV. If you are not already, please subscribe. And if you want to know when we post our video, which is not consistently, but is at least once a week, click on that little bell icon and you'll get a notification in your inbox. And it'll say, bing, these bitches put a new video up. Which I get it. It bings my work thing. It bings mm -hmm. my phone. Like, I get an alert every time. You I can go. also go onto our website at sincitybounty.com and sign up to get them right to your email. Mm -hmm. so you never have to worry about it. And really quick, next week, um, we're going to have uh, an, uh, but a sex. special topic regarding butt stuff. I'm, so. Ale I'm Alexia. Toxie. And Sierra. And we will see you next week. If you're brave enough. Later, bitches. Oh, <laughs>